Hi there, my name is Ag. I'm also known as MX Tips. Today I'd like to show you a few things that could help you to get unstuck in Emacs. You see, very often Emacs does something unexpected, where you see something weird, um, and uh, sometimes you, you, you'd have a hard time figuring out what's going on. I will try to keep this video short and informative, okay? Of course, this isn't a comprehensive troubleshooting guide. There's so many situations that just can't be covered in a single video, okay? So, use case number one. Let's say you accidentally press a key, perform a key sequence, Emacs does something, and you're scratching your head. What the heck just have happened? How did I get here, okay? And for that, you can use a feature called uh, Lossage. You can run command view lossage. It's bound to control HL, right? And uh, what it does, it shows you last few input keystrokes and the commands you ran. You can see that it's limited in size. You can run lossage size command, and you can see that by default it's set to uh, gather 300 keystrokes. Um, you can increase this number, but usually you want to keep it small. Like you, you don't give it like you know 10,000 or 100,000. But if you need to analyze more than just a few last keystrokes, you can use a feature called a dribble file. Okay, let's uh, write this down. So first one, it was a lossage. Uh, lossage. We're gonna. Um, Take this, uh, then lossage size, okay? So use case number two. Use case number two. Dribble, open dribble file. All right. Use case number three. Sometimes it's the opposite. You want to use a key binding, but first you want to check if, uh, if it's uh, occupied by some other command, okay? And uh, you probably know at this point that in Emacs, there are different levels of mapping keys to commands in Emacs. There are global keys, local buffer keys, major, minor mode key bindings. Um, we're not gonna talk about the key bindings in depth today, just a little, all right? You probably know about this describe key command. It's bound to control HK, right? What it does, Let's uh, let's run it. Describe key, and uh, you give it a key sequence. Let's give it Control H K, right? And it shows you to what command it binds. I told you that by default it binds to describe key, right? But on my machine it it binds to helpful key. A helpful key, if you never heard about this package, helpful.l. This helpful.l is, um, is an alternative to built-in help that provides much more contextual information, okay? So let's run this helpful key command, right? So in my configuration, control HK runs the command helpful key. There go, I'm gonna run control HK and I'm gonna, it would ask what, like to press a key and I'm gonna do control HK, right? So you can see the difference between this on the left side, it's the output from built-in describe key command. On the right side, it's the output from helpful key command, okay? You can see they're notably uh, different. Uh, helpful key shows not only how the key binds to the command in this current context, but it also shows all the different key maps that this key binding being used in, right? It, uh, it shows references, it tells you if this function is being advised, it shows you how, how it's being advised, okay? It's, uh, it includes the source code for this command, and uh, it allows you to to enable debugging, tracing of this uh, of this command, and uh, it's it's great. Emacs has a number of built-in functions, built-in commands 
that start with describe, describe key, describe chart, describe face, and helpful adds a few a few commands of its own. You can see similarly, but they are they uh, they give you more information. So I highly recommend helpful. So try it. Okay, describe key, helpful key. All right. Since we're talking about keys, <clears throat> you're probably familiar with this package. So you can see when I press space, it shows this um, head up display. And this is coming from a package called the Witch Key. And uh, Witch Key, a lot of people are familiar with this package. It's very useful. It comes bundled in Space Max, it comes bundled in Doom Emacs. But not a lot of people realize that it has a very useful feature a command that is this which key dump bindings okay so what does it do which key which key dump bindings you run it and then you give you may give a prefix let's say for control x all right and then it will tell uh a buffer I can say control X keys okay and it will just dump all the control X uh, key bindings into this buffer right if I don't give it a prefix I'll just do um, top level keys keys you can see it will dump all top level keys top level in this specific context right and you can see there are lots of them lots of them I have over 400 top level keys configured this that's a one of the greatest ways of discovering different key bindings okay so all right now use case number five use case number five sometimes you want to figure out like you see a certain character uh, on the screen and you can't figure out like what like what makes it um, makes Emacs to show it like this uh, let me show you an example so I'm just gonna open one of the one of the Emacs list packages um, I have and uh, what I'm gonna do um, page break lines mode. I enable page break page break lines mode, and you can see that it paints like you know this nice separators, right? And uh, you wanna like you know how how these come to be, right? What is the font lock? How the Emacs uh, does it? What what is it like? What like? imagine you don't know about page uh, page break lines mode and then what you can do you can put the cursor where the the character is and you can say describe char right and then it will tell you that this is a page break lines face and if I press enter here it will say all the face attributes I yeah, and the, the, the foreground color I can even enable I have a rainbow mode it will show the color here right so now you know that it's coming from page break lines uh, dot L and it has something to do with the page break lines uh, mode right so if I if it's not enabled it will not show those right so that's uh, case number five. Uh, describe, describe, char, describe char, right? All right. Okay. Use case number six. Let me write um, a silly, very silly piece of Emx Lisp. So. If I eval this, you see what ha what happens. This is a forever loop, okay. 
if I eval this, it hangs the hangs my instance of Emacs, right? It it's not gonna respond to any keys. I can't do anything. I can keep pressing Escape. I can press even Control G. It's not responding. It's uh, it's just stuck, right? A lot of times people just like decide to kill Emacs and restart over but most of the time you don't have to do this so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna switch to my external program external terminal outside of Emacs okay and run this command p process kill with the signal uh, user 2 to Emacs all right and you can see something happened Emacs broke out of the loop so what happens user kill user to kill signal will interrupt whatever Emacs is doing and drop drop it into a debugger okay and that's that's great but how does this work how does this work uh, let's see if I go to elisp uh, manual built-in manual in Emacs right and then I'll do info search here all right and search for sig user 2 sig user 2 um, it will say okay there's a user option debug on event and it says if debug on event set to a special event Emacs will try to enter the debugger as soon as it receives the event so let's see what's the value of this debug on event thing and sure by default it's set to sig user 2 that's how when Emacs receives the special the special event um, it drops into a debugger I will cover debugger probably in um, depth uh, in some other video because uh, Emacs has extremely good capabilities of debugging tracing things it's just it's just amazing but um, it's just gonna be too much if I uh, try to do it here All right um, let's uh, let's copy this here All right so the case use case number seven now sometimes things are slow all right things are slow and you can't figure out like why are they slow all right let me try to show you I'm just gonna add hook to this uh, pre-built hook called pre-command hook okay I'm just gonna add pre-command hook and uh, what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna I'm gonna write a function function that just does nothing but sleeps for and uh, let's say this amount okay and then here I'm gonna say add hook to foo okay let's let's not call it foo let's call it pre command h pre command sleep h okay this suffix is a convention for uh, naming uh, functions that um, that added to hooks okay so and then we'll do this here and if I eval this you can see things are slow things notably slower right I don't know if you can feel it but I definitely can so how do I figure this out like how do I figure out like what slowing down so Emacs has a built-in profiler okay you can run profiler start and then you can choose either CPU or uh, memory right but since I'm using doom 
doom has uh, its own helper function called toggle profiler okay and if I run this it will toggle profiler I can do certain things right and then I run toggle pro profiler again and it shows two reports one report first of all uh, let's go back and uh, let's remove this hook because it's uh, slowing down things considerably for me so now you can see two reports here okay one is a profiler report for CPU and another memory profiler report right let's uh, see the CPU one uh, you can uh, if you press enter it will it will then oops if you press enter it will then expand this section but if you want to expand all of them you can do control u enter and it will expand everything you can uh, also if you press d i believe it should show the documentation for the command okay so now you can see the documentation and if you press j it should jump into the the code that it's uh, associated with this command okay so now you can see it's running 42 47 uh, percent uh, some other things blah 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 let me see I don't even see my um, sleep thing sleep oh okay here it is here it is down there but it's interestingly it doesn't say that it's uh, having a lot of impact but it's definitely here oh here's the bigger impact 10 percent 10 percent um, impact all right so you can use this profiler to figure out like what making certain things slow right and you can tweak uh, the settings you can like you know remove certain hooks yeah profiler is great uh, use it and um, right profiler start and uh, another one is this one right okay folks that's all what I wanted to share with you today See you next time.